Arsenal 2, Manchester United nil. the final score at the Emirates. Stephen Doyle here with my co-commentator Gary Breen. Um, I suppose, what's your big take from that game tonight, Gary? Uh, a lot of positives, really, in terms of Arsenal, in terms of what Arteta has done in such a short space of time. Uh, we saw a little bit of organisation in his first time in the dugout against Bournemouth, made it difficult to play through. Went to another level against Chelsea for 80 minutes, were brilliant. Looked like Chelsea had run out of ideas, but for a goalkeeping area, it looked like they would have won that game. But I feel that they've gone to another level today. The organisation was there again in a short space of time. They still had that energy, that drive, that organisation to close people down. Every one of those players were working ever so hard. And it was impressive, it really was. I think we're looking at players who have much maligned for Arsenal. Players who have certain strengths, but a lot of weaknesses. But Arteta has found a way within that system to play to their strengths, and it ended up producing a really impressive performance. I said to you at half time as well that I got the feeling that the players are all playing for each other, and yeah. that's what you want in a team, isn't it? Yeah, I think it is, but ultimately, I think more than anything, these supporters want them to play for them. And a lot of the cheers that you would have heard this evening weren't necessarily expansive, lovely, beautiful football to watch. It was just closing down tackles. I think Torreira at the base of midfield typified that. I mean, I can't count on... There was a probably double figures the amount of times he saved situations and cleared the danger. So he was impressive, but he wasn't alone. Xhaka, who I wouldn't be one of his biggest fans, but played so well at the base of that midfield in terms of getting that ball into Ozil at 10, who was so impressive. Yes, in terms of his skill, we know that, but how hard he worked off the ball. But that was how he played against Chelsea as well. So we're seeing a consistency now. I know it's in its infancy. I know this is very early days, but it does look good. Will Xhaka be allowed to stay, do you think? Is he going to hang around here? Well, I don't know. I think you asked me the question, can he repair the relationship? I would have thought pre-match, no, because I don't think ultimately that the problems he has with the Arsenal fans are not necessarily about his reaction to being substituted that time and cursing them as he come off. It's, it's, it's notably that he just doesn't play consistently well enough, makes the same mistakes. But we saw none of that this evening and you would have thought that Manchester United would put him under the type of pressure where he could be vulnerable but we didn't we just saw a controlled disciplined performance but he wasn't alone we saw it from we literally saw it from 1 to 11 It'll be interesting to see whether that Hertha Berlin move uh, materialises yeah. for Granit Xhaka but another man maybe who frustrates fans here over the last couple of years at Mesut Ozil I thought he was really good again tonight. Um, as you mentioned before the game, yeah. Mikel Arteta did say that he wants to see a good work rate from Mesut Ozil as well as everything else, but that he will make, you know, try and get the team to play around him as well. Did you see that tonight? Oh yeah, most definitely. And I, and I, I don't think it is Arteta saying, I'll try. He says, I'm going to. Now he said the rest of the team are going to have to provide him with a type of service that he can thrive because if you get the ball consistently into Ozil, you've got a player that they've got no one of the same ilk in the squad. You've got a quality player. And I think at times Emery tried to get that work rate side to him at the expense of getting him into good areas and playing. I think Arteta knows him, having played with him, he's a teammate, so that bodes well, that, that partnership between the two of them. The other thing as well is that Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang, who has been brilliant for Arsenal since he signed here, maybe not at his best tonight. So when you think when you get him firing on all cylinders in a really good team performance, yeah. we could see an awful lot more from this Arsenal side as well. Oh, without a doubt. But listen, I always felt that um, Arsenal were lucky to have Aubameyang. I think he's just, I think he's a superstar of a centre-forward. The concern that you have is uh, trying to get him and Lacazette into the team. So they'll push him onto that left-hand side, but he's comfortable there. But what was noticeable, and something, what you didn't see towards the end of Emery's regime, was that... He was willing to put that real defensive shift in because more often than tonight, you'd have seen him in the left-back position and that was the same against Chelsea at home just a few days ago. So he's not shying away from it. I never felt he would and I've always thought he's a good character in that he'll sacrifice his own game to play on the left to accommodate his mate Lacazette up front who put in a great shift as well. So there was no player that I potentially said was a weakness. The guys who, who normally let you down in the key moments, your David Luiz's and, and people like that, were just so consistently good tonight. Ooh. Jacka and, or sorry, not Jacka, Socrates and David Luiz played well at centre yeah. half, but the January transfer window opening now will Arteta maybe look at it as an opportunity? I think he's probably going to hope that Holding comes back. I think Chambers' injury is, is a big loss because he was someone that he probably would have played a lot. That looks a bad injury now. He'll probably out for the foreseeable future. It's great to see young Holding back, but I don't know what value we can get in the transfer market. Who's available? Is it going to be a significant upgrade on the two performances we saw tonight? Because if you're looking at that, then it's unlikely because people wouldn't let centre halves of that quality go. The concern that he will have is that are these players able to consistently do it? Pep Guardiola, who um, Mikel Arteta worked under, of course, at Manchester City, to always takes cup competitions very seriously. Yeah. 
Will Mikel Arteta do the same with Arsenal? Of course, face Leeds on Monday night, yeah. third round of the FA Cup. How's he going to do? Will he take that Pep Guardiola approach? Yeah, listen, I think he. I, I don't necessarily think he'll try and mirror Pep Guardiola. I think, as he said in the build-up to this game, we play for Arsenal. We're expected to win every game, so he knows it. Can you imagine the crowd that's going to come from Leeds for this game? It's going to be a great atmosphere. It looks like Leeds potentially could get back in the Premier League. Um, from promotion for championships, so they're going well, of course they are. It's interesting to see that young Eddie Nketia, this young centre forward that Arsenal have loaned to Leeds for the season, has been brought back now. He'll come back to Arsenal in January, so whether or not Arteta wants to see what he's like, it'd be interesting. But I think they have to go after comp- comp- the cup competitions and, and get some silverware because that's ultimately what Arsenal are about, challenging at the top. Now, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer mm. might be scratching his head tonight and wondering why his United team didn't get going. They just, they never really clicked at all. And as you said, towards the end, of it, it was all hit and hopes that like they were, there was no real pattern to their play. What's he thinking tonight after that game? Well, I think he'd be disappointed. There's no doubt about it. There's no glossing over it. And I'll be interested to see what he says in his press conferences because at times there's no consistency. There's no real... He seems to contradict himself. We're talking about Pogba. It's a huge miss for Manchester United. If he's firing, we're being led to believe it was a cold, then it's an injury. There's no consistency in terms of what he's saying. There's certainly no consistency in how his team plays. If you play against Manchester United and you don't allow them the opportunity to counter-attack, then they're going to struggle. They've got no creativity in that 10 area, and that's the frustration. We're talking about Manchester United here, and that's the big problem they need to address. So, United, I suppose, looking ahead, like they have had a good run of form. You know, I'd be kind of a little bit... You know, reluctant to maybe say, oh, you know, it's all going wrong again for Manchester United because they have had a good run of form. They beat Tottenham, beat Manchester City. They've had yeah, a good Christmas. But there's a consistent, they're, they're, there's a reason why they're beating them players, of them teams, I should say. They're beating the better teams because they want to dominate possession. Tottenham, Man City, those type of guys. And obviously they got the draw against Liverpool. The only points they've dropped is because they take the game to them so they can counter-attack and play their way. But as soon as a team says to them, we're going to try and sit back, we're going to put a good defensive structure in place in midfield and you've got to show the ability to break us down there and been able to do it. Now, this isn't one-off and we're talking about Arsenal, but you've got to give context to where Arsenal are at the moment. They're a struggling team mid-table going into the game, essentially. So you're looking at it then now thinking, well, how can a team bottom of the league, Watford, beat them? How can a team that is struggling at the bottom, West Ham, beat them so comfortably and how have Arsenal been able to do it? It's a recurring theme and there's a real issues at Manchester United. As much as they want to put the spin on it in terms of the DNA, the culture, I, I, I just I, I just don't recognise Manchester United. You certainly wouldn't be predicting right now who, like if you look at the top four, it's looking like Liverpool, Leicester, Man City, maybe to take the top three places. But you really could not predict with any kind of surety who's going to get that fourth place, could you? It's like, as I said before the game, it's the slow bike race again, isn't it? Yeah, it's incredible, really. You think about the consistency that Chelsea had back end of September going into October. It looks so good, but I think... Um, a bit of experience will tell it's a young team at Chelsea still, so they're learning their way. They're dropping points where they shouldn't have done. They got out of jail winning here because they shouldn't have done. But for a goalkeeper mistake through Leno in goal, which ultimately would have been six defeats in eight, they dropped two points again now away at Brighton. So they're making it a hard work of it. But again, Arsenal, Manchester United, Spurs again dropping points where you thought Mourinho would make an instant impact. It's not quite happening for him. So it's so much still to play for. Listen, Liverpool are ahead. They've done it, in my opinion. They've won the league. But in terms of that battle for that fourth position, it's going to be a one that goes right to the wire. Great stuff, Gary. Thank you. Thank you.